Hi there, everybody. It is me, Taylor, aka the Skanky Gal, and welcome back to my channel. I think today's episode is going to be... It's an episode. What is this? Friends? How I Met Your Mother? Netflix? Apparently we're dropping episodes now. We'll just call this episode two of the crochet and yarn vlog. So I've been on here in a while. By a while, I think it's been like a month. Yeah, I think it's been like a month. Because I think the last time I talked on here, it was about the cardigan that I finished, the patchwork cardigan. Got that finished. Gave you guys kind of a run through of some of the yarn I had bought at a few different luxury stores that I went to with my mom. Yeah. Oh, it has been. My oh. So last time I was on here, y'all got to see this beautiful skein of yarn. And I'm about to show y'all what I made with it. So, um, yeah, the cardigan I made with that, it about brought me to tears on several different occasions because I've never blocked an item before. And I blocked that cardigan out of this. This is the only ball cake I have left from the six that I bought. So, yeah, I think I'm going to make a hat out of this since I have something left over. Anyway, um, this whole journey with this cardigan literally just about brought me to tears a couple of different times. I almost decided that maybe I should just stick to making hats and blankets and scarves and never make any kind of actual wearable clothing article ever again because this cardigan gave me nine kinds of hell. I've never really blocked anything before. This is my first time actually properly blocking something. But blocking mats, I got the pins, I got the everything. When they say that yarn grows when you get it wet, it is the God's honest truth. Like, so let's just say this is, is like, let's just say this is the card again before I blocked it. Okay. The sleeves ran like down here. They got so long and I was just like, that's not normal. No, no, it wasn't. They got huge. Uh oh, here comes my dog. You going to bed, bud? That's a sign that it's late and we should go to sleep because he's, he's going to bed without me. He gets sick of my shenanigans and just goes to bed without me. Anyway, let me just, let me just show you guys the cardigan. So, this is it. I'm really proud of it because I did work really hard. Like, really hard. So... It's a cropped cardigan. Like, it's cute, right? Yeah, I think it is. These are the sleeves that now fit me perfectly. Thank God. Because like I said, they were like that much longer. Sure, they were really, really long. But they worked up so pretty. It really, really worked up so pretty. Sorry, I also keep looking this way. I have my laptop set up over here to the side so I can kind of screen mirror what I'm doing so I can see what I'm doing because using my front camera on my phone, yes, I use my phone. Using the front camera on my phone, I've noticed it's kind of blurry. Not pixely blurry, it's just not good clarity and I'm like okay look I paid all this money for this really nice phone I should probably use the fancy little cameras on the back so here we are but then I didn't know how I was gonna see what I was doing <laughs> it's been a whole song and dance me learning how to just notice I don't have my microphone this time yeah I didn't like that when I got done recording everything and listening to everything oh god that was awful that mic will not come back mm -mm, no anyway this is the cardigan I think it worked up really pretty so I blocked it, okay? Uh, I'm also not quite fully finished with it. I have to crochet a bunch of little, bunch of little lemons I'm gonna put all over it. Cause I was like, oh, I saw this 
baby cardigan on Pinterest that was knitted, not even crocheted, and it was this cute little card. It had all these little lemons on it, and I was like, I can make an adult version of that. So I did. So anyway, blocking this thing, um, I blocked it twice because it, it really was an atrocious disaster. Like, oh God, this thing was a mess. It's just supposed to be like a cute little cropped number, right? Right? Yeah. This right here, this right here, this laid out nice. The back part laid out nice. The sleeves grew like 16 inches. I'm not kidding. And I was like, I didn't even really block them. I didn't pin them or anything on the blocking mats. I just gently laid them up there. And oh my God, they grew so much. I was like, what did I do wrong? So then I tried like spraying them down with water and like scrunching them and then laying them out and trying to like see if that would fix the issue. No, it didn't, it didn't do anything. Then I call my mom and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm terrible. I shouldn't make clothes. I really should. I just take the stupid blankets and stupid hats. And I was all upset. And my mom's like, um, so, cause she watches Kim and Jonna. Those of you who watch any of these podcasts and blogs, you know what I'm talking about. They're freaking funny and they're hilarious and they're wonderful and they're actually really educational but she said she watched Kim and Jonna and I can't remember which one she said it was I think it was Kim who's been knitting for like 30 years or something sorry she's been knitting for like 30 years or something and apparently she made a little capped sweater vest shirt situation and the cap sleeves grew like all the way down to her elbow so after much struggle and deliberation, she decided to take the beautiful 100%, I think it was wool, my mom said, and just throw it in the dryer to see if that would fix it. So you can bet your sweet fanny. I threw this in the dryer. <laughs> Which I know some people are like, oh my God, Taylor, that, that's 100% American wool and you did what to it? Oh yeah, I threw it in the dryer. I did. And I don't, I don't feel bad about it. I'm actually really pleased with myself that I threw it in the dryer. I'm actually really pleased that I threw it in the dryer because my sleeves, I'll put it on just a second. My sleeves shrunk up to where they need to be. So they actually fit my long orangutan arms quite well. So yeah, that was, um, a godsend. Because I, I was literally telling my husband, he was sitting on the couch, and I was like, maybe I just shouldn't do this anymore. Maybe I should, like I said, just stick to blankets and hats and just be done with that. And he was like, now, don't be like that about it. And I'm like, uh, but I want to be like that about it because it sucks. So anyway, I pulled it out several different times and stretched out the back really good while I was going through the drying process. But once the arms got exactly where I wanted them, this was still damp and I went ahead and threw it on the blocking mats and blocked the back and front. So yeah, if you give me a second, I'll put it on. I'm also going to like add some little videos of the headache that this damn thing was. And it's not even done because it still doesn't have its lemons. Okay, so the fact that we're at my sink, we're just gonna have to ignore the background of my abode. I'm taking this damn blue cardigan. I'm going to try something very risky with it. If it doesn't work, it's wool. I can stretch it back out, right? Sure, we'll see. But blocked it. The sleeves ended up stupid long for no freaking reason, even though I did not block the sleeves. I gently like folded them up onto the blocking mat. 
and they became because they fit perfect before I blocked the damn thing. They fit perfect, and then blocking them was like a freaking disaster. So I'm gonna do something really sketchy. I've got it wet. I'm about to roll it up in a towel to get um, the last of the moisture, like the sopping moisture, out of it. And I'm gonna throw it in my dryer. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'll let y'all know how it goes. sleeves are fine like they were they're hanging like that like I'm not kidding and now they're basically right where they need to be the back still sits up a little too high but I'm not too too mad about that I'm like eh, it's fine I don't hate it I do like how it looks but um I need to I was noticing kind of how it like droops a little too far down on my shoulders I don't like that so I need to take at the seams just kind of take it in just to just like a couple of stitches like I don't really want to call it tacking but I don't know the right term just gonna take you know a couple little basically I'm gonna take my darning needle and some of the extra not from that cake that I have but another cake not even another cake what am I saying oh my god it's the leftover yarn from the cake the last cake that I used on this cardigan and I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna use probably like that much of the yarn just to kind of just tack in the shoulders a little bit tack I'm gonna pinch them in just a little bit just so it holds up on my shoulder a little bit better it doesn't slip off because I feel like the neck part is too wide but this is like I said, I've been crocheting for like six years, but this is really the first time I've made things I could wear other than a scarf and a hat. I feel like scarves and hats are so simple and so easy. Like a hat, you just measure your head and other people's heads and just kind of go from there. And it's just, I don't know, they're just easy. And then scarves, you just make it as wide as you want or as long as you want. Like there's nothing really to them, in my opinion. Now that might be a bit of a far statement because there might be some people out there going Taylor um I struggle with hats and I struggle with scarves but it's something I've never really struggled with also ignore that we're not going to talk about the fact that I have yet to weave that piece in <laughs> anyway this is going to be a learning curve for me and I'm already working on I'm just going to wear this because it's actually really cozy and it's so soft I cannot even begin to tell y'all how unbelievably soft this is. So soft. And I just love it. And I'm really proud of it. I know it's really simple, but like, I made it. The patchwork cardigan, which I've named the Carmen cardigan. I like the name of it. It works. That cardigan was so much easier because it was just a bunch of rectangles or squares or whatever you choose. It's just patches and you sew them together. And I took the measurements which is so funny because I was watching one of my favorites. I don't knit. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll get to that in a minute. I don't knit. But I do follow several different knitting podcasts because there's just, I like seeing what people do with yarn out there. I really, really do. Whether it's knitting or crocheting, I just like it all. So, um, there's a woman who I follow. Her name is Kika. I cannot remember exact. I'll tag her. YouTube channel in just a second. I cannot, it's, I think it's Kutukova Kika. I can't, anyway, she basically said the word at the beginning of her handle it means to knit in either sw Swedish or Finnish. It's such a pointless little blurb that I'm giving y'all here. She's a knitter and so she does like a knitting podcast and her name is, her name's Kika, but I cannot pronounce the beginning of her handle so I'll just put it like right here 
We'll put it right, right there. I'll tag her handle so that way you guys can follow her if you want to. Um, I got my mom watching one of her podcasts with me yesterday and my mom and I were sitting there watching it and she does exactly what I do. I take a pre-made garment that I've bought and I take the measurements off of that. So when I made my patchwork cardigan, I basically laid out one of my cardigans that I bought from Target and I just measured the sleeves, measured across the chest, measured the front panels, me measured the back, the length and the width, measured, like I said, the sleeves and everything. And I went off of that. That's how I did my patchwork cardigan. And then for some reason, all of that knowledge that I used fell out of my head. And I didn't do that with this one. And I wish I would have because I already have a little pre-made crop cardigan that I bought, again, I think from Target. I should have measured that because that one fits me so well. And taken those measurements from that and done this because that is something that my mom and I when we were watching Kika's video yesterday she talks about like ways to be a better knitter like I said I don't knit but I still like watching other people on YouTube who do knitting podcasts and crochet podcasts I just like seeing what other people make because it's just one it gives you inspiration and two it's just cool see what other people make it's just it's cool and I really enjoy watching stuff. So I was watching the episode of my mom and she's talking about like different ways to be a better knitter. And I was like, a lot of that does apply. It applies to crocheting as well. Like I should have, that probably would have helped me with a lot of the heartache and frustration of making this. It would have helped me big time if I had measured my pre-made garment before I made this. But then again, that's part of the learning curve of making wearables. So I'm just kind of embracing it as I go along and trying not to rip out my hair. Because I'm telling you, I was gonna rip my hair out over this damn thing. I was gonna cry, I still gotta make the lemons. Then I still need to attach the buttons. It's got the spots for the buttons. I just, I didn't do it. Don't even know if I wanna put buttons on it anymore. Kinda like it without them. So, yeah, I guess I don't really button my cardigans anyway. I don't know. Anyway, I haven't really put the lemons or anything on it yet, but we're working on it and we will get there when we get there. Until then, I just need to stitch this a little so it'll quit slipping off my shoulders because I can feel it slipping and it's making me crazy already. But it's really comfortable and it's really soft. And like I said, I made it from the uh, Quince & Co., don't mind me as I dig through my yarn bag. It's the Quince & Co. I think it's their Osprey line. Yeah, pretty sure it is. Oh, okay. So you guys remember whenever I posted the, it was when I posted the hanks of like the peachy color yarn and the green. Yeah, I have the tag, the label. Arasanya yarn. I think that's how you say that. I don't know. Start my tank top. So far, I haven't ripped my hair out, but I've started my tank top. And it's going to be a cropped, like, fitted, ribbed, like, crop tank. I've got about, this looks crazy right now because it was shoved in my yarn bag. But it, it's all stretchy. I've got, like, that much of it done right now. That's just basically, it's going to have to be blocked because it's. But it's coming along so nicely. Like, look at these. Look at how that's worked up. What is that doing? It is so pretty. And it's so soft. And it's really... It's got some good bounce to it because the stitch I'm using. But it's ribbed. That's just the, the bodice of it. So it's going to fit like this hold I'll show you. like like that yeah like that but not with a sweater and a tank underneath you guys get the point that's something I'm working on very excited about this hoping it's kind of a slower project because it is so small so tiny anyway I'm really excited about this. 
hopefully I'll have it done in like the next week or so if I can quit putting it off. I totally see now why a lot of knitting podcasts and crochet podcasts people have several projects going all at once. I am definitely the kind of person that likes to get one thing done at a time. Like the moment I start a project, I want it to be done. I want it to be done. I want it to be complete. I want it to be finished. I want to wear it. I want to cuddle up with it. I want to put it on. I, I'm that person. I want to wear it. So I'm trying really hard to finish this so I can wear it. I'm going to have to block it to even out. I caught myself and I went back and counted my stitches in several different places just to make sure I had the same amount of stitches going all the way through and I am like why is it so big down here why is it like through here and then it's normal through here but it's not as big as it's because I got tighter and tighter with my tension and I'm not gonna lie I think it's because me and my husband were watching the Mandalorian <laughs> and there were some parts that were a little stressful and I'm like crocheting like oh my god did that just happen so I think really that's why it's just I got tighter my tension so I need to block it to straighten it all out and make it all you know even and nice but I'm super excited about that that's coming along really nicely when I finish it I will show you guys and then I will tag the tutorial when I'm done with it let's not tag it right now in case I don't finish this so yeah I do a lot of um YouTube tutorials is what I follow a lot of because I'm a visual learner. I should really learn to read a pattern, but I don't know when I'm going to do that because I'm, I'm not the best at reading patterns and I, I should learn. I should learn. Speaking of learning things, hold. I got this wild hair up my butt recently and by recently I mean within the last week of, hey, I'm going to learn to knit. That was funny. So I did. I didn't learn how to knit extensively. But I learned how to do a knit stitch. And to purl. Kinda. Big kinda on the purl thing. But I definitely learned the knit stitch. I actually did it with this extra yarn that was chilling in my yarn bag. I bought knitting needles. They're not the most expensive or the most fancy because I was like, why am I going to spend a lot of money on knitting needles if I don't like knitting? And to be quite honest, I'm not sure if this is for me or not. I bought this. bought this nice little fancy case that has all these needles already in it and other things that I don't know what to do with because I was measuring things incorrectly but I did learn to kind of it is fun but I just don't get that that I do whenever I crochet but it sucks because like when I go into a lot of these nicer yarn stores basically everybody knits and I'm like am I trying to learn to knit because I feel pressured not really pressured, but I feel like I'm missing out and I should learn to knit because everybody else is knitting. Not a lot of people crochet. And not a lot of people crochet garments either. And usually when you do crochet garments, they're just... Depending on what stitch you use and how you go about it, it just doesn't look like a knitted garment. And there are some knitted garments out there that I'm like, wow, that is beautiful. And I'm not going to be able to replicate that with crocheting, even though I definitely do try. So, yep. I decided I was going to learn to knit, which I think... I don't know, whenever I first started crocheting, my mom was like, you need to start with washcloths, start with something small, see if you even like it. And I was like, no, I'm gonna crochet a hat. And I did, I did. I crocheted a hat, I crocheted a scarf. I like bigger projects that make me go, okay, I did that. So maybe that was my problem. I just started with the basic, I mean, I worked up a good section of knit stitch. And I was like, oh, okay. It also hurts my hands. Because I'm so spoiled with my furls crochet hooks. That feels so nice in my hand. Like, look at this. Look at it. Hang on. Let me see if I can. There it goes. Look how beautiful that is. It's so pretty. And it's so nice. <laughs> and it 
fits so great in your hand. Oh, it's not focusing on this. Don't focus on me. Focus on this. Oh, it does. It fits so nicely in one's hand. I'm just like, mm, that's, that's it. This hurts. This hurts bad. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just not for me in this moment in time. But I do have the things available and on hand. That way, if I do want to do this, I can. I don't know. Maybe I should learn to knit some socks. My mom said that socks are like the hardest thing to knit. And everyone keeps telling her, if you can knit socks, you can knit anything. And I'm like, I tried to crochet socks once. That was comical. The first sock I made, it was lovely. Just beautiful. Just stunning. The other one looked like I had elephantitis of the foot. I was like, what is that? What, what happened here? Why does that look like that? So, yeah. Anyway, I did. I tried to knit. I really did. And I think I'll probably revisit it. Because it doesn't help that there's really not a lot of crochet podcasts out there. Or crochet vlogs or whatever we want to call these. There's really not a lot of them out there. Most of them are knitting. And it's like, well, I watch all these girls knitting and I'm like, I want to do that. But there is one girl. It's Knee Knits. Yeah, I don't think she calls herself any knits. I think it's just knee knits. She will crochet some stuff, but she knits a lot of things. So she'll post some of her things that she crochets. And I don't know, my husband was, he was definitely in full support of me attempting to knit. He giggled at me and called me a grandma. But he was in full support about it. He was like, sugar, you don't work on cars and only learn how to do one thing. You gotta learn how to do electrical. You gotta learn how to do this. You gotta learn how to do that. And I'm like... You have a good point there, bud. You have a good point there. He's like, to be a better mechanic, you got to do all the things. And I'm like, okay, okay, he has a point. So if I'm going to do things with, what is it people call it? Fiber arts. I call it yarn work. I might as well learn how to do it all. Maybe it's just not in the cards for me to learn how to do knitting at this moment in time. And two, I don't think it really helps me much because I have... This I just finished crocheting. I'm working on finishing crocheting that tank. So it's like, where do I actually have the time to learn to knit at this moment in time? But, oh, that's what I need to show y'all. I'll be right back. I went to West 7th Wolf. <laughs> and Amy was lovely. She was so kind and so nice. And I told her, like, look, I don't, I don't, cro I don't knit. I crochet. And she's like, okay, okay. I was asking her about different types of yarn and how it felt when it just simply like worked up and she brought me out a couple of different things that she had knitted and that she has worked up and she's like well this is how it looks and this is how it feels and as she like she's like I know that you said you crochet but you know as you work into those stitches it's going to get heavier it's going to weigh like this it's going to weigh like that and I was like okay cool but she let me just sit literally on the floor in the middle of her beautiful store to look at my phone <laughs> to look at yarn most other stuff. She was helpful and she was lovely and she was wonderful and I really enjoyed being in there. So if you do live in the DFW, go to West Seventh Wool. It was nice. It was lovely. It was beautiful. They also dye their own wool there. I was like, uh, aren't y'all great? So I got my hands on some Juniper Moon. The I think it's serious is how you say this. I meant to ask Amy. I didn't ask her. Or is it Cyrus? I think it's serious. I can't I didn't ask her. I should have asked her to how to say it before I got on here and started to butcher things like I do. Because I get on here and I butcher the name of stuff all the time. But I'm going to make a tank out of this and it's 100 percent Mako cotton. You don't need to see the price tag. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And then It's so, and it's like, it's like butter. That's how soft it is. It's like buttery soft. It is lovely. So I bought three of them. And I'm kind of like regretting buying three of them. I'm like, crap. I should go back and buy a couple more. And I should make a cardigan out of this. So, I mean, I'm really, I'm really contemplating it. I can give y'all the details behind it. It is 100% Mako cotton. It is 100 grams 
328 yards. It's a number three lightweight. <gasps> I didn't even see this on the back. They actually give the suggested crochet hook on here. <gasps> that makes me so happy. Most of these higher quality yarns don't. They only give knitting needles. And I'm like, okay, I'll figure it out. So, but it calls for a US 5 to a US 7 knitting needle or 3.75 to 4.5 millimeters. And then it calls for a 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. But this stuff is so damn soft. Like, Yeah, because it's, it's 308 yards. Imagine the cardigan I can make out of this. And how soft it would be. And it's cotton. So yeah, it's going to get a little heavier, but... I really... Like, I have to. I... Just look at that. It's so soft. And it's so great. And it's so lovely. And I've seen Juniper Moon before. Kind of looked over it, kept moving about my life, and then I walked into West 7th Pool and I'm looking at all the cool stuff Amy's got on hand, and I'm like, I need to have this. I'm gonna have to go back and get more. But the thing is, I'm worried because they have a dye lot on them. Oh, they smell good. But yeah, they're so soft. I'm really contemplating not making a tank out of these and going off and getting more and making a cute little cropped cardigan because I wear a lot of crop things okay I'm just a crop cardigan kind of girl and I thought about too making an actual sweater out of it these are just the thoughts I have okay okay but this is what I bought recently and I'm very happy about it very happy so yeah that's one of the projects I have in mind so but before I squirreled out and thought about that I was saying I see now why so many People who knit and crochet, most of the people who knit, they move on from project to project all over the place because it does get a little bit boring and a little bit mundane, constantly working on one thing at a time. So, yeah. Yeah. I went today to go buy yarn to make, didn't like, a friend of mine's having a baby. I didn't like the yarn that I was using initially because I make a lot of baby blankets too. Like something I like to make. I did not like the yarn that I was initially working with. So I went to Hobby Lobby and got yarn because I don't think I'll ever really make a baby blanket or a blanket for that matter out of really nice yarn. Because that would be like a ton of money. <laughs> so... Yeah, I went to Hobby Lobby, and not that it's bad yarn, it's still good yarn, it's just I don't think I can mentally handle spending $400 on yarn to crochet a baby blanket. So, yeah, anyway, I went to that today. My mom, however, recently gave me all of this vintage wool, like, and they're all mini hanks. And it's, it's old. It's from like the 70s. I think it's what she was telling me. It's the 70s or 80s, but it's, it's, and it's scratchy. It needs to be conditioned. Look at that. You can see the little hairs in there, like. And it's, it is, it's like, it's kind of soft, but it's kind of. Can you hear that? sounds like a sponge so it's, it's old and it's vintage but she gave me there's bags I mean bags of this stuff so I thought let me show you more. I mean I'm not kidding bags of this it's all the same brand but wait there's more it's all these mini hanks. Like these itty bitty. So I got to thinking. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And it's just itchy and scratchy. But it's 
There's tons of them. And all these different colors. That one's really pretty. It's a very pretty green. This one's like a seafoam kind of green. There's more of a teal. There's an old tag on this. Oh no, that must have been how much it sold for. I think they went for 99 cents a piece. Like a seafoam kind of color. Earl Grey kind of color. It's really pretty. But there's so much of it. Oh, these are the really deep, pretty emerald ones. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So I figured what I could do with all of this, which I'm super excited about, is take it and I'm either going to make a sample sweater because I'm this is going to have to be a winter fall winter kind of wear I have enough of this crap though <laughs> it's not crap it's wonderful because my mom gave it to me it was free and it's not crap it's really good quality yarn it's just old and feels awful it needs to be washed so I've got enough of it to make a, maybe a sample sweater or two if I want to be bold and ambitious and make a sweater We'll see. I could definitely make a patchwork cardigan and like kind of find, go through all these and put together the colors that I want to see in it because I don't think it says on these things how many yards these are. It just says 100% wool made in France. If anyone knows this brand, Lane Abroder. If anyone knows that brand, I could just Google it. But if anyone knows that brand, let me know. Like, yeah, that's good. Or, oh, it's okay. But they don't really say. No, they have lot numbers and that's it. They don't say how many yards is in each one. So this is going to be a freaking guessing game for me. But um, I figured I could make even make patchwork cardigans, maybe one or two. Maybe a, a cropped patchwork cardigan would actually be so super cute uh, I could just make a crop cardigan in general I don't I don't know that my, my options here are plentiful yeah i am be working with this crap this summer and I don't care I'm super excited can you see the colors in there what's that okay my okay those are already balled up those are skeins Ugh. oh no i shouldn't have opened it it's like pandora's box it's not going back ah. uh, yeah i think that's the same as that no definitely not like these colors could go together and i can make the cutest cardigan or sample sweater because they're all just these uh, and i that's the other thing too they're cute they're so cute. These little mini hanks. I'm just like, oh, is that the same? Yeah, that's the same. I should keep those two together. They're the same dye lot. They are. Well. So, yeah, I'm super excited for this. My mom gave me all this, and I'm like, this is great. I can't wait to do something with it. So, whenever I have the urge to go buy more yarn, I need to remind myself that I have this in the office, and I need to be using it. I'm actually really comfortable in this sweater right now. I haven't worn it much since I got done blocking it. I need to fix the shoulders. Once I fix the shoulders, it'll be better. <sighs> yeah. This is what I've been up to. I'm sorry I'm not as energetic as I normally am for lacking caffeine. I would normally make a video in the middle of the day, but, but baby he's one he's a hellion chasing that guy around and trying to, and god only knows if he's actually going to take a decent afternoon nap or not those of you who have children completely understand what i am talking about because sometimes you're like oh yeah they're gonna oh my god they're gonna because sometimes you're like oh yeah they're totally gonna take a nap 30 minutes later they wake up so yeah 
really excited for this. I think this is the only one in this color, though. Yeah, it is. And then I've got, like, this little scrappy. Where's the rest of it? So, yeah. Super excited about making something out of these. And I can't wait to make something out of them. And then wash it. That way it feels good. Because I think I have, I think it's called Outback Gold. Is the name of the wool wash I bought. I think it's called Outback Gold. But I mean, it made this so soft. And this wasn't even, I mean, it's not even scratchy to start with. It's still really soft. But it just made it even softer. So, and then my patchwork cardigan, I did wash that. Which, looking back now, I could throw that thing in the machine. The machine. I could throw it in the machine. I could throw it in the washing machine and it would feel just fine. I just have to run it on a delicate cycle because it's not 100% wool. I think it was about like 20% wool. So it's not enough to make a difference. Because trust me, I was hoping it would shrink up a little bit because I did make the sleeves a little longer. Because it's quite like a good baggy sleeve. Well, I was thinking baggy in width. Baggy and length. I'm telling you, this is a learning curve for me. I should take pictures and videos of some of the blankets I make. And then y'all would be like, oh, she really does know what she's doing. Because right now, my life with wearables, it does not compare. Okay, it doesn't. But it's a learning curve. And that's why I'm on here. Because I don't know who's going to watch these videos. I don't know who's going to see them. But maybe there's somebody out there, like myself, who's going, huh. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I kind of suck at it. And then hearing me go, this is hard. And realize, you know, I'm the only person out there struggling to make wearables. So, yeah. That's what I've been up to. The DFW is having its yarn crawl right now, which I was. Me and my mom talked about doing the yarn crawl. Kind of wanted to do it. Kind of don't. Just because this, a few of the shops that they're going to be hitting up are close enough to me for me to go on my own time. When it's not as crowded. I know that sounds really snotty. But I like being there by myself. Touching everything. Sitting on the floor of West 7th Wool. Researching yarn on my phone. And adding up yards. <laughs> And not being judged by people. <laughs> so, yeah. I need to make my way back up to the McKinney Knittery again, though. I really, really, really do. I need to make my way back up there. I'm going to go by myself. Or with my mom. Not taking my baby this time. That boy was not about the yarn. He liked it pretty good, but he was like, yeah, I'm done. Take me home. So, yeah. That's really it. I'm trying to think of anything else that I may have missed. Other than me literally trying to. I'm probably going to try to attempt knitting again. After I get done talking to y'all about this. I'm going to sit in my bed. Watch the Great British Baking Show. And practice. Because practice makes proficient. You're never perfect. No one's ever perfect. We all have. like we No. I do hair. Okay. Do hair. And I had an instructor. A long time ago that practice he, he used to tell us all the time practice doesn't make perfect because no one's ever perfect practice makes proficient it's gonna be proficient in knitting maybe i don't know we're really not gonna lie though the sound of these things like gently touching each other while you're working it's beautiful it's beautiful who knows i might go sit in my bed and knit I'm going to sit in my bed and knit. So, yeah. That's really about it. That's it. I'm working on the tank. Bought new yarn. I think I'm going to go back and get more so I can make a cardigan because I'm telling you this. Think about sitting outside at night wearing, like, shorts during the summer. Think about this during the summer. During your summer months, no matter where in the world you live. I cannot explain to you how soft this is. It's like melted butter. Or like, yeah, it feels it feels like butter that's just melting in your fingers. This is the softest yarn I've probably ever touched. I'm just like, oh my god. So wait, think about summertime, okay? Kids are in bed. 
you want to sit out on your porch and have a glass of wine with your husband. But it's got a little bit of a breeze. So you want to wear a little bit of a lightweight cardigan. This bad boy is going to be that cozy cardigan. This. This is going to be my cozy cardigan for the summer. Who knows? Maybe one or two. Because that is a good color to go into fall and winter. This might be like one of those year-round cardigans that you just wear with everything. You wear it to the grocery store. Wear it to the movies. Yeah, I gotta go buy more of this. Maybe I'll knit this one. I don't know. I'll keep it posted. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here because I'm not my overly awake and ultra chipper self because like I said, I did chase a little tiny human around and he's exhausting. God, I love him though. Mm, love that freaking kid. Okay, yeah, that's it. So, hopefully, I'll be back in a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, and I'll have something to update y'all with. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> It's like my mom and my husband who are my subscribers and I think a good handful of people I literally about like died when I saw I had 10 subscribers. I was like, oh, I have 10 subscribers, 10 people. I was like, well, two of those people are your mom and your husband, Taylor. The other eight though, you guys, we're going to be friends. We are. So, yep. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be back on here next week. See what I do over the weekend. Maybe I'll have my friend's baby blanket done. And I can show y'all that because I really do make beautiful blankets. <laughs> and I do take pride in them. And I like gifting blankets to people. That's the that's ones like friends of mine having babies or like friends of mine, like their kids. I'm like, hey, your girl's turned. I have a client who's got twins and I love her twin daughters so much. So I'm like, hey, they turned 10 this year. That's a big number for, for kids. It really is. I made them blankets. They love them. She sends me pictures with them. I'm like, I'm glad they like them. So I do make very pretty blankets. So yeah. Okay. Getting off here. I am going to go to bed. To either knit or crochet. I haven't decided which yet. But this is me and I'm signing off. So until next time.